Okay, so let's uh, look at questions 13 and 14. I think we have enough time to do that. Um, there are quite a bit, um, well, they are both conceptual and mathematical. And I think the biggest mistake I see people making is um, you think it's more mathematical than it is conceptual. And the trick is, even though it involves numbers, it's actually meant to be quite a bit conceptual. So you will see that the math you have to do, it's not, um, once you know conceptually what you're doing, then the math you have to do won't, get to, won't be too complicated. So let's get started. Um, we have a math that, uh, let me just highlight the information that I feel I'll probably need to refer to as we go. There's some mass of um, thing, uh, hanging from a spring of some spring constant, and hopefully you read about this in the textbook, and we have gravitational acceleration. All right, good. Oh, we are given the force diagram. So, okay, there's some work we don't have to do. All right, so it says when the mass hangs from the spring and comes to rest at equilibrium, and there's something you should understand, uh, remember from your reading about what equilibrium means. What equilibrium means is that your net force is equal to zero. And I guess I can actually stop there. When, but you know, what net force is equal to zero means through Newton's second law that acceleration is zero too. But um, the main thing that matters is the net force the sum of all the forces, and these two are all the forces, they add up to zero at equilibrium. Mm. So, all right. Um, so it asks for the amount of the spring force. I don't think I have any idea what that is. So let me skip that for now. Uh, weight of M, that I know. That was in the section. The textbook said weight of some object is equal to mass times g. So I already have the mass of 1.8 kilograms and using 10 meters per second squared, the weight should be 1.8 times 10 or 18. And the unit here is kilogram meter per second squared. And what I'm hoping you will remember from your textbook reading is that this unit is equivalent, this unit is equivalent to Newton. That's how Newton is defined, as kilogram times meter per second square. All right, so I have 18 Newtons as the weight of mass M, and this is where I would use the information that I was talking about earlier. The net force is equal to zero. The only two forces acting are the spring and the weight of M. So if they have to add up to zero, well, then spring force better be 18 Newtons. Otherwise, I see acceleration in the future for that block. Um, all right. Um, so I guess uh, let me illustrate something. So having done all this, I can actually plug in the answers now and submit it. Now the system will warn me about how, um, um, about how I haven't answered all the parts. And this is where I want you to use the fact that um, you have unlimited tries. <laughs> so yeah, it'll mark a part to be incorrect, but you don't care. You have unlimited tries to attempt to those two other questions. So, and the reason I'm recommending this is that knowing that you got these answers correct, makes it easier to answer the, the, the following part because you don't have to, you have to worry less about where did I make the mistake. So, all right. Um, it asks in part B, how, by how much does the spring stretch for the mass at equilibrium? Um, I, um, uh, so if you're starting out with that, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna stop it just I like just like I stopped it. So here are some information that you should uh, highlight for yourself so that you can find it and use it. So 
So I figured out spring force in part A. It was 18 newtons. And I have an expression that relates the spring force to how much uh, the amount of stretching that the spring force does. The amount of stretch, call it delta x, is related to spring force by this. The so spring force is equal to spring constant times the displacement delta x. And in this question, um, you are given the spring constant, and I guess you could use that. Um, so let me solve this expression for uh, delta x. Um, so to do that, I have to divide both sides by k. And when you do that, k cancels out from the right-hand side. And what you end up with delta x, um, the, change, the how much the spring stretches is equal to amount of spring force at equilibrium divided by um, oh, divided by k. All right, um, so amount of spring force, that's 18 newtons, and the spring constant is uh, looking back up there, 10 newton per centimeter. And I think it's all working out for us. 18 divided by 10 is 1.8. Um, whatever this thing is, the unit wise, but looking at that, this is what I found. The Newton part cancels out with the Newton. You have one over one over centimeter. So the unit here becomes simply centimeter. And that's the unit we are looking for. For a while, I was thinking I had to convert centimeter to meter and then meter back to centimeters. And if you know how to do it, great. Unit conversion is a good skill to have. But for the purpose of this question, if you set up the equations carefully and answer carefully, then no, um, then, um, then the final unit that it comes up with is, happens to be what we exactly wanted. So spring stretches by 1.8 centimeters. And um, that's probably correct. <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> it says, uh, suppose the mass on spring is pulled down. And, uh, oops, sorry, I did delete that. It should be 1.8. Uh, pulled down and stretched by an, and this is the word I want to pay attention to, by an additional, 2.2 centimeters. And we, I can uh, try to illustrate this as uh, well as I can is with a diagram, with a force diagram. So we do this uh, object. We already have two forces acting on it at equilibrium. There are two forces here, weight of the mass pulling it down, and we call that W. And there's a second force, spring force pulling it up and call it force of the spring. And this is the remarkable thing. At equilibrium, these two forces are equal in magnitude to each other. That's why they came to equilibrium. Now, it says, it says the mass is pulled down by an additional distance delta x. As you're doing that, how do you think your free body diagram will change? Going from this shape here to something else. So as you are pulling it down, what I hope you realize is that the spring applies an upward force on the mass. That's why as you pull it um, 
yeah, that uh, so it's the spring applies an upward force on the mass. So the way you need to modify this um, free body force diagram for this new situation is um, is so that you can start out with the fact that there's going to be a new upward force as the mass is pulled downward. And this is the spring force. And you can even plug in the numbers to figure out what the spring force is. It's going to be equal to um, the spring constant, which is somewhere up there, uh, 10 Newton per centimeter. Um, you have the spring constant, and you multiply it uh, to get the net force. So you multiply this with the additional distance 2.2 centimeter. And you know you did it right when you do it right because the units will cancel out and you'll get a unit of Newton, which is the correct unit for a physical quantity that is a force. So multiply them 2.2 times 10, then you get 22. So this support force must be um, um, must be 22 newtons. Now, you do have to be careful because it's asking for the acceleration of the mass, not the, um, um, not, the, not the force, not the net force that you found, um, or not the spring force, but um, here are some things that does simplify the calculation you have to make because of the way it's set up, because of the, the way these two forces add up to zero. This new force you are adding, that's the only, um, that's the only force that's going to contribute non-zero amount to the net force. So this is net force. And knowing that this is net force, then you have a formula for calculating the acceleration or um, I guess you have Newton's second law, which gives you this formula, that acceleration is equal to net force divided by mass. So I have net force, 22 Newtons. I divide by M, uh, it's up there. M is 1.8 kilograms. So, um, so let's see what happens. I don't think I can do that calculation in my head, especially while I feel so sleepy. Sorry, I don't know why it's an attack of us. <laughs> Net force, uh, 22 Newtons divided by the mass, 1.8 kilograms. So the acceleration of the mass, the moment it's let go, where you have this amount of force, from, uh, from the spring, then the acceleration of the mass should be 12.2 uh, meters per second squared. So, um, so yeah, let's uh, plug in the numbers and see if I made any mistakes while I was sleeping. Um, so, one second, 12.2, uh, all right. Um, submit, and <laughs> good, <laughs> nothing embarrassing here. And I guess I keep forgetting, I did make a video for this. Uh, I don't know what the video looks like, but there's a video help that, oh, I see. Um, this is kind of an overview of how Spring Force works, which I put a lot of time into it. I think it's a great video, please watch it. <laughs> um, but uh, this does go more deeper into uh, how to think about spring force rather than giving you the answer, which is what I did in this session. <laughs> so watch it both. Um, I think if you got the answer from this discussion here, great. But if you feel like there's still some gap that this discussion didn't cover, then this video help should help you. If, or if it's not helping you, let me know. Maybe I need to uh, do it somewhat differently.